Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. Uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission has announced that it discovered over 1.3 million invalid registrations in the ongoing continuous voter registration exercise. The commission also said the figure amounted to 44.6% of the 2.523 million completed registrations. Uh, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, said this during a press conference in the nation's capital, Abuja. According to him, the figure was from completed registration uh, starting from June 2021 to January 14, 2020. 22. Now, while describing the development as worrisome, the INEC bus cited multiple registration failure of the automated biometric identification system and incomplete data as the reasons for the invalid voter registrations. Yakubu also said infraction happened, the infraction happened in all the states of the Federation. Now, joining us to discuss this is, I'm glad to say, uh, Professor Zokoye, who is the uh, national electoral or the National Commissioner of Information and Voter Education at INEC. Uh, Ms. Okoye, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you so much. These are indeed worrying statistics. I, I, I saw the, the, the infographic that INEC put up and I think INEC has been doing well in getting these infographics up so that it can be easy for the public to understand. Um, I saw it entering my WhatsApp this, mo this afternoon and I was shocked to see 44.6% nationally and um, please take us through the reasons. I know that this has been put out by the National Chamber, but, but please take us through the reasons why we're having these number of invalid registrations. Well, uh, well uh, uh, it's, it's really not new. Um, uh, since the commission introduced the biometric voter registration exercise, uh, we've been having invalid uh, registrations. If, if you recall, uh, in 2019, when the commission, in 2011, uh, pardon, uh, beg my pardon, beg your pardon. In 2011, uh, when the commission uh, concluded uh, the voters registration exercise, uh, we discovered a total of 4,239,923 invalid registrations. Uh, now, as we are heading towards the 2015 uh, general election, uh, we uh, also carried out the CVR, and that brought the total figure of registered voters uh, to 69 uh, million. 720,350, and it went down, you know, because previously what we had was uh, 73,528,040. Uh, now, just before the 2019 general election, uh, the commission also conducted uh, the CVR exercise, and we registered a total of 15,317,872. Uh, but out of this number, we had a total of 1,034,141 invalid registrations. Uh, and that brought the total number of registered voters uh, for the 2019 general election to 84 million. Now, for this particular ex exercise, we started on the 28th day of June, uh, 20, uh, 2021. We had a two-track uh, uh, um, a process. One, one track involved physical registration, which we did in our state and local government offices, while the second track involved uh, a pre-registration using our, our online portal. Uh, so it is a combination of all these registrations uh, that uh, led to this particular uh, figure you are seeing. Now, most of these invalid registrations came from one, uh, persons who lost their PVCs. And rather than going to go and report that they lost their PVCs, they went and registered afresh. The second relates to persons whose PVCs have been damaged. Uh, rather than report damaged PVC, they went and registered afresh. The third involved re registrants who uh, wanted to transfer from one state to the other. Rather than engage in transfer, they registered afresh. Unfortunately for, for uh, most of these people, we have a, much, a, a, a robust uh, cleaning up system involving an automated biometric identification system, ABIS which no, not only identifies your printer print, but also identifies your facial. And so wherever you are, wherever you have um, uh, uh, run to, or whichever state you have moved to, it is able to identify you. Uh, so this accounts for some of these uh, multiple registrations that we have had. And it's uh, really, really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Indeed, really unfortunate, like you said. Um, I'm just going through uh, the, the infographic, and I'm seeing that, um, Mr. Koe, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm sure you have, and that we have 
uh, all the high, um, the states that are above 50% uh, um, in terms of uh, the invalid votes, uh, in, in the southern part of the country, I'm not trying to create a, a situation of north versus south here, but it's just what I've observed. And most of them are, are in the Niger Delta. So we're looking at uh, Bielsa State with 67.1% invalid uh, uh, registrations. Uh, Cross River State, south, south again, 51.3%. Uh, you have Delta State, 50.1%. And you have River State, 53.2%. These are in the south south. Now, one in the southeast, which is uh, the second highest, a boy state, 60.1 percent. Is there anything around surrounding this? Well, uh, you know, this particular figure represents the figure for the first and second quarter of uh, the registration process, the CVR process, uh, which the first quarter um, uh, ran from 28th day of June uh, 2021 to 21st day of September uh, 2021. Why the second quarter of the CVR ran from 4th October uh, to 20th December uh, 2021 and ending on this fourth, uh, the, the figure we have as at the 14th January 2022. Mm -hmm. Now we have done the third quarter voters uh, CVR and now we are in the fourth quarter. Uh, so the figures um, keep, keep fluctuating. But what is important, what is fundamental and what is troubling is that we have invalid registrations in all parts of the country. As the chairman pointed out, no part of Nigeria, no state of Nigeria is immune from this uh, voters registration exercise. Uh, but as you see, the voters registration exercise, you can see that the figure, the figure we have for the second, uh, uh, third quarter is different from the figure we have for the second quarter. And it will definitely be different from the figure we are going to have for the, uh, uh, for, for the fourth quarter, for the fourth and last quarter. And for this fourth and last quarter, we have devolved the registration process uh, to the registration areas. And you know, we have 8,809 registration areas in Nigeria, and we are devolving on a rotational basis uh, from one uh, 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 registration area or what to the, to the other. And so the figures will keep on fluctuating and keep on changing. But I, I think what should be emphasized on what is fundamental and what is valid is the fact that the, the invalid registrations cost across all states of Nigeria. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Koi. Uh, um so are you saying that this these figures i'm reading out are for just two quarters or therefore yes. exactly that just for the first and second quarter we are we are yet to clean up the data for the uh, for the third quarter and the fourth quarter is uh, presently ongoing and we end on the 30th day of june uh, 2022 okay all right um so this is us at 14th january 2022 exactly. okay exactly. I, i'm also seeing that um, we have 2.53 or 523 million registrations. Um, bearing in mind the, the population of the country, uh, what struck me when I looked at this, this, the, these figures in the morning uh, was that I, I thought it would be higher. Yeah, yes, uh, that is our expectation. Uh, you know, but um, without uh, sounding pedantic and without being pedantic, you know that um, uh, sometimes uh, we Nigerians, we leave everything to the last moment. If you go to our registration centers now, especially at the state, local government, and the, and, and the registration area levels, you will see that the surge has started because people know that we are in the last quarter of voters' registration exercise. And I can assure you that when we get to two weeks to the end of this particular exercise, you will see a deluge. Uh, so mm -hmm. it is consistent with uh, the way we do things in this uh, country. Okay. Um, Bear in mind that yeah. this voters' registration exercise has been ongoing for nine, nine months. But if you go to the registration areas now, you will see the surge of people uh, coming to register because we are in the last quarter. So I can assure you that this figure will, will jump uh, uh, as we proceed um, uh, towards the uh, finishing line of this uh, CVR. It's really sad, sad reality. I mean, we're seeing this um, last minute attitude with the uh, national identification number and SIM card linkage and uh, we just hope that our compatriots can learn to do things early enough. Um, uh, I, would, I was going to ask, you know, is it that INEC is not, you know, enlightening the public enough? But I'm aware of the efforts that INEC has made to put information out through different means. So I want to ask that question. Um, so why are people still not um, doing the right thing? You're talking about those who have lost their PVCs going to get new cards. Uh, those who have damaged PVCs going to get new cards. Those who have 
uh, are wishing to transfer from one place to the other, just walking in and doing their registration. You know. um, so what should the right thing, what should be the right thing in these three scenarios so that people um, do not keep, keep, keep give, you know, putting, up, putting up invalid uh, registrations? What do they need to do if your PVC is lost, that's number one, and you want to you know, replace it? If you get a new one, if your PVC is damaged and you want to get a new one, or if you'd like to transfer your polling unit from one location to the other? Well, you see, you don't really need to do much. If you have lost your PVC, what you need to do is to get an affidavit from the court indicating that you have lost your PVC. And the moment you come with that particular affidavit, what we will now do is to call up your data because your data already exists on our database. We already have your data. We call up your data and then input the fact that you have lost your PVC and we schedule you for another uh, permanent voter's card. But if you go and start a fresh registration, at the end of the day, our cleaning up process will show us that you registered before and we will delete you uh, and um, your second registration will be invalid. If your PVC has been defaced, the only thing you need to do is to report that your PVC has been defaced and it is no longer readable and it's no longer usable, we will print a new one for you. You really don't need to do anything. If you have moved from one state to the other, the only thing you need to do is to report that you have moved from one state to the other and that you want to transfer your, your pulling unit and your PVC uh, to a new location. And we will just transfer you to a new location. You don't have to go and begin to carry out registration afresh. But you know, uh, some Nigerians do not really want to... Um, just go to the court to go and get that particular affidavit and pay the token fee that they normally pay in court. And then we also found out that there were some Nigerians uh, that um, some couldn't remember which one, uh, whether during their previous registration they used their surname first or they used their first name first and so on and so forth. And so because they couldn't remember, uh, they just simply say, oh, you know, since I can't remember, let me just go and register a friend so that I don't uh, engage in, 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 in jeopardy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you get into, jo into jeopardy. So what you need to do is to go and do the right thing. Those who we have asked, uh, those we have um, classified their registrations as still valid, their previous registrations are still valid. So what they need to do is to go back to our INEC state or local government office or to the special areas and do the right thing. And then we will validate the right thing they have done. But if they persist in doing the wrong thing, thinking that we are not going to uh, be aware of it, our processes have become robust. Uh, our identification system identifies both the fingerprint and the facials. So no matter how you want to beat the system, the system will um, not allow itself to be beaten. All right. Interesting. Uh, before we go, I'd like to bring up the uh, uh, very unfortunate development that has um, emanated in the last uh, few hours in, in Emo State uh, today. Uh, with your continuous voter registration exercise. Uh, we hear some activity, uh, some violence in Ihite, Oboma, a uh, local government area of Imo State. Can, can you tell us what, what happened in Imo State? Well, I, you, you know um, uh, that uh, from the 11th day of April uh, this year, uh, we devolved the, uh, permanent, uh, the continuous voters registration exercise uh, to the uh, registration area levels or what you call what, uh, uh, what level. Mm. At, on a rotational basis. Okay. Uh, so some of our staff, uh, we are uh, doing the CVR in um, Ihitu Boma um, uh, local government, uh, more particularly in where they call Unkwa Ihite in PU004 in Amako here, what RA02, uh, when um, uh, they, they, they were attacked by some unknown government. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one of our staff by name, Ngokori Anthony, um, uh, lost, lost, lost his life in the process. Uh, he has been moved uh, to the to the mob, uh, and then the remaining two staff um, that uh, we couldn't locate initially have now been located. Uh, they have injuries, uh, but are in very stable con uh, co condition. Uh, so that is um, uh, the situation as of today. And uh, so many of the um, um, uh, 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 potential registrants uh, we are we are injured in the process. Oh my! Oh my! Since, uh, since, since, uh, so, so consequently, we have suspended uh, the registration process in the Boma local government. Sincere condolences, uh, Mr. Koe, to, to you, INEC, indeed the family of um, uh, uh, this, this individual, uh, Nwokori Anthony, as you said, who was shot by a gunman. Um, so this is a suspension of the exercise in that local government area or in the entire Igbo state? 
we, we, we suspended the uh, uh, registration in that particular local government. Uh, prior to this, even prior to this particular period, uh, the commission was not doing CVR in Osu, and, uh, Osu local government and in Jabba local government. Uh, while in uh, Oru East, Oru West, Olu and Ohaji Ohio, local governments, we are doing the CVR only in our state and local government offices. And it's really very, uh, a very sad development. And if you look at uh, the figures that we have been releasing, you can see that the figure for Imo State is either the last in, in the Federation or the second to the last. And it's a very, very unfortunate development. We feel that people uh, who want to register should be allowed to register and exercise their democratic franchise at the right time. Interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Fesu Zokoyu. Definitely will be having you on this program uh, in subsequent weeks uh, as we look at what's happening as we count down towards the 2023 election. So thank you and uh, for joining us and for the good work you're doing. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. And thanks for staying with us right here on Plus Politics to round up today's show. Nigerians tell us their opinions on Bola Abitinubu running for presidency. Plus, Plus Politics returns tomorrow. I'm Kofi Bartels. Good night. Hey, it's majority that can carry the fourth. Not only me. People should run for the president. I don't think anything bad in it, but there's going to be an issue, most especially legal state, which I know. The capital letter no. Capital letter no thing. No option for him to run, man. Still the same people, same old leaders, you know. He's still going to take us back, you understand? So we just want to move forward. There's a lot of youth that can rule the state and that can make things happen better. There are all, at least a lot of youth. Tunubu has ruled uh, Lagos State. I, I mean, I, I believe, my, in my own opinion, I, I believe that he wants to go up there again, but he's, he's older, Tunubu is old already. Let the youth, at least one of the youth should rule laws and let's see how the difference between the youth and the adult. Yes, I mean, Tunubu can run for presidency. He's from Nigeria, so he has every right to run. So the power depends on you. If you like, you can vote for him. If you like, 